Good morning, good evening, and good afternoon. Before we begin, I just wanted to give a big thank you to each and every one of you. Thanks to you all, I just hit 1500 subscribers. And what better way to celebrate than with my first installment of the advanced guides to Crystalline Conflict. Today's star being the Gunbreaker, one of the more underplayed roles with a huge potential. In today's guide, I cover junction usage, limit breaks, class matchups, and a breakdown of a few strategies I employ. Thank you all for clicking on today's video, and with no more delays, let's get into it. The first question that probably jumps into a new player's mind when picking up the Gunbreaker in Crystalline Conflict for the first time is what junction do I use? You have three options before you, Tank, DPS and Healer. Firstly, one major issue has been addressed when selecting a junction. You used to only be able to target enemy players. You can now, however, target yourself and allies. Before, if the enemy team had no tank, you were out of luck and you could never use the tank junction for that entire match. Being able to target yourself now means you have access to Nebula before the round even begins. So which junction is best? Well, during my playtime, I picked up a routine. Firstly, the healer junction. Honestly, I find this to be a dead skill. There was no situation I came across where the healing to yourself and allies outweighed the benefits of extra defense or damage. I also came to learn that the gunbreaker in the DPS junction can basically explode the rule I follow that highly boosted my win rate is if you have a second tank on your team, start with a DPS junction. You have some incredible burst damage for a tank. And with the enemy attention divided, the Gunbreaker can do what he does best, taking off angles and diving in from the flank, extremely punishing to those caught off guard. Playing this way, my average match was anywhere between 3 to 5 minutes. If your team is struggling, you can then always switch to the tank junction and run a double tank strat using your boosted survivability to outlast the other team, wasting them of their MP. Now if I was the only tank on my team, I learned to always begin with the tanking junction. A lot of focus will be aimed your way, and the miracle of nature is your greatest threat. Without the use of the tank junction ability Nebula, hard CC is almost certain death. So when solo tanking, the best approach I found was to always use Nebula before engaging. Don't overcommit to chasing targets. Hold strong around the objective and retreat when you need your elixir. Doing so was allowing me to stall out long enough to abuse the Gunbreaker's extremely fast Limit Break charge, increasing enemy damage taken, reducing their damage dealt with a mass stun, with a mass stun which is an ideal setup for team follow-up. In a few matches, I was the only tank alongside four ranged DPS classes. This really highlighted a weakness in the Gunbreaker. With your whole team so split and lacking coordination, playing alongside an all-range team required the tanking junction. In matches with high coordination and high aggression, it was the DPS junction all the way. Yes, I may die a few times, but the follow-up from the team just keeps the momentum going. To sum it all up, if you're the solo tank, choose the tank junction. And if you're duo tanking, choose the DPS junction. Switch junctions accordingly as the match evolves. And never choose the healer junction. It has a few niche moments, none of which will serve you better than the tanking and DPS junctions. One amazing part to the Gunbreaker's kit in Crystalline Conflict is their Limit Break. In competitive, it plays out a lot like the Dancer and the Reapers, whose Limit Breaks still control and can be lethal on the objective. Diving in headfirst onto the objective is a gamble with an explosive payoff. During overtime, at least one must step in the ring against you. One of the best attributes to this Limit Break is the ability to manually end it. If I am using the Tank Junction with Nebula, oftentimes I will Limit Break for as long as possible in attempts to get the full 5 stacks onto a target, which increases their damage taken, while reducing their damage dealt by 4% per stack for a maximum of 20%, ending in a mass stun. A perfect opportunity for your team to follow up. However, when I am in the DPS junction, I like to use the Limit Break more aggressively. You will find going for 2-3 to three stacks is more than sufficient. A quick few stacks into a stun, followed by double down and blasting zone, deals some nasty damage. If that same target is already under fire, without guard or help from their team, leads to a very fast kill. One thing to keep in mind, 
is just how fast a Gunbreaker's Limit Break charges. We all know how fast White Mages get theirs, and there is one in almost every game. You can not only keep up on the charge rate, but can also double combo off, destroying all unfortunate enough to get caught within. I also find great success comboing off with Dragoons, Dancers, Black Mages, Summoners. The Gunbreaker's ultimate without a doubt works well with any class, but the devastation really shines with jobs whose limit breaks affect large areas and deal huge damage. For a new player, one of the biggest mistakes you can make is holding onto your ultimate for too long. As a Gunbreaker, you can expect a limit break within every team fight. The only times you are going to save your ult, no need to go to the enemy when they are forced to go to you. Limit break mastery is an essential part to climbing in Crystalline Conflict. If you can succeed in two out of every three limit breaks, you are setting yourself up for success. Climbing into the gold and platinum ranks will be well within your reach. Let's begin with the Dark Knight. They make for a powerful ally, allowing you to go full aggro. When facing against them, it is a fairly even matchup, with a slight advantage given to the Gunbreaker, as Dark Knights need to spend their HP to keep up on the DPS. Having a warrior by your side can set your team up to completely rush through your enemies. Again, an even matchup. With your DPS, you can force them to burn through their self-sustain. At the same time, the warrior will be able to snare you from escape and shut down your guard. Without the use of the DPS junction, warriors in a 1v1 will out-sustain you. The Paladin. I found the greatest success with one by my side. They bring the defense while you bring the offense. Together, it is easy to outlast the opposing team. When facing against a Paladin, Gunbreaker by far has the advantage. Your powerful burst eats through their MP reserves. The Paladin lacks DPS, means you can skip by them altogether, instead going through his backline and then finishing the Paladin last. The Monk is the ideal dive partner. If you can match their pace, diving a single target together leaves them with very little chance to survive. Dueling against a Monk is rather neutral. You can both deal some fast damage to one another. The edge is in the Monk's hand, however. When it comes down to the limit breaks, they will not only knock you back when using yours, they will be able to chunk your health in almost one go. The Dragoon goes without saying they are the perfect ally. Huge explosive damage, which is amplified by your own limit break. Fighting against a Dragoon is a tough battle. Closing the gap will help reduce their Wormwind Thrust damage, also helps to reduce the effectiveness of their insane burst rotation. If you can catch them off guard, without their evade or guard ability, the battle turns in your favor. The Samurai is not the best ally, but your ability to boost their damage helps them out greatly. Dueling against one, the advantage is the Gunbreaker's hands down. The Samurai's slow rotation is not the best when it comes to dueling tanks, as long as you never fight into their Chiten, while their Limit Break is ready. The Gunbreaker can burn through a Samurai with relative ease. The Reaper can be rather hit or miss, as it comes down to that player's experience. The Limit Break combo potential is extremely powerful. When faced against a Reaper, 100% the advantage is all Gunbreaker. Should the Reaper prepare their insta-kill combo, there is little to nothing a Gunbreaker can do to survive. The Ninjas make for a wonderful ally. It sets up powerful dual flanking combos. When facing against one, again it is a neutral battle. The Ninja will stun and chip away at you, while you also chip away through their powerful self-sustain, leaving you both in a stalemate until the less stubborn player backs off. White Mages are every team's best friend. Their abilities are almost unrivaled in ease of use by the other supports, and your Limit Break combo is devastating. When dueling against the White Mage, you are at quite the disadvantage. A well-timed Imp is a guaranteed death. If you can bait out Imp, or catch when it has already been used, you can apply great pressure. Though it is still unlikely, you will be able to kill the White Mage single-handedly. The Scholar can greatly increase your chance of survival. In a 1v1 as the Gunbreaker, you should be able to close the gap. Your burst potential can force them to burn through their shielding oftentimes leading them to burn through their expedients in order to escape. The Astrologian can provide a nice power boost and a fair chunk of healing. When faced off against one, outside of their crowd control, Astros are little more than a nuisance. Caught off guard, you may be able to burn one down faster than they can heal through your assault. Chasing an Astro is not worth. They will long outlast you and keep your attention away from the objective. Having an allied Sage is always welcomed. Great damage while also feeding you HP. Facing off against one is another sort of neutral battle. You can both dash and deal some great burst. However, the edge is given to the Gunbreaker, as you can challenge the Sage within their own limit break using your own. They either take great damage with you in the ring, 
or give up their immortality against all outside of the ring. The Bard makes a wonderful ally to any class. Their ability to boost damage and increase limit break charge rate works wonders with the Gunbreaker, who already has amazing DPS and a fast charging ultimate. Facing off against one another, the Gunbreaker has all the advantage. You can very quickly close the gap reducing their DPS effectiveness. As the Gunbreaker, you can very quickly either snag the kill or force them to retreat from battle entirely. The Dancer once again makes for the perfect flanking ally. And just like the Reapers, their Limit Break is a perfect combo, forcing all to drop their guard and lose control. When facing against one, the advantage is all Dancer. Four dashes to your two, they can easily bait you into a chase. That would quickly end bad for you. And as the Gunbreaker has no range, the Dancer can continually DPS into you. A Machinist is one of the best allies you can have. Their ability to deal huge damage through guard works wonders with your burst dive combo. Fighting against the Machinist, the advantage is all theirs. Without both dashes ready, diving into them simply leads to you being knocked away. That same knockback can completely shut down your limit break. And if you're not paying attention, your health can vanish within a blink of an eye. The Black Mage is also a perfect ally. Their crowd controlling is unrivaled. Mass sleep and freeze spam makes your life easier against more nuisance jobs. Fighting against one another is rather evenly matched. During their limit break, they can deal some serious damage to you. At the same time, your own limit break is just as effective. It often comes down to who deals the most damage first, forcing the other to flee. Having a red mage by your side can give you the advantage against any role. Their silence and the ability to reduce damage and healing plays well into your effectiveness. When faced off, it is often a neutral battle. Weakening your healing done hurts tanks greatly. They can easily outmaneuver you and keep up with your damage. 1v1ing often comes down to experience and the scenario you are currently in. And last up is the Summoner. When it comes to fighting on the objective, they are wonderful. Between their zoning and stun ending with a limit break, which will evaporate players caught within your own limit break, their combined power is uncontested when fighting for the objective. Against one another, the advantage is all the Gunbreaker. The Summoners lack any escaping ability. Closing the gap and sticking to them, you will burst through their defenses and have only one stun to worry about. Now I'm not going to go through every possible strategy, as there are far too many, most of which depend on your situation, so I shall be guiding you through some of the scenarios from my own games, while talking about the strategies I employed. To begin, I take up the position on the far right. I find this better than going mid, to avoid being full focused, and to cut off my enemy from any cheeky flanks. As soon as the objective unlocks, I make the first move, separating their Astro from their Dark Knight, continuing to pressure their Dark Knight until he gives up on my back row and is forced to flee. At this point, I am now free to move to the objective. It is important from here on that I keep a close eye on my MP reserves, as this will determine how long I can fight on and stall point. I drop to around 4000 MP and make the split second decision to fall back and top up. A good decision, which was just what we needed to turn the battle. As once I jump back into action, I am able to get off a huge limit break. I get crowd controlled, however this has no effect in stopping my limit break, and with my white mage paying close attention, he finished off the fight with a perfect follow-up limit break, not only winning us the battle, but set up the momentum for a steamroll. Following the previous fight, I top up and hold back, watching the shortcut through mid. This was enough to deter both the Dark Knight and the White Mage from flanking, who very quickly became distracted by the objective, allowing for my own flank. And with some bad positioning from their White Mage, this allowed me to abuse the environmental and steal the health kit right from under him, forcing him to drop out, allowing me to rejoin the teamfight. As a Gunbreaker, your fast Limit Break charge allows you to get creative. In this next clip, I am going for a long stall on point. I managed to escape just in time to heal up. My Limit Break is coming online, just as the Environmental is coming in. A chance I do not waste. Using my Limit Break, I quickly kill one target, and I stun a second, allowing me to swipe the Chocobo Feather for myself. The Dragoon barely survives, however this play was enough to turn the tides of the match.
the opening to this round is very similar to before, with me taking up the right side position. Only this time, my riddlin induced white mage went straight in, landing a powerful strike. I delay no time in following his example, nearly landing us two early kills. And with the Dark Knight by my side, we held the attention of four players, during which my team were able to slay the poor summoner. Following this, I tank some crowd control until I am able to flee the battle. Here, I begin with a cheeky flank. I timed this just as the environmental was about to begin, serving as a distraction and playing into their panic. Not only did I manage to force their black mage from the fight, I saw the perfect chance to limit break the paladin, who unfortunately is blocked from retreating by the very same environmental. This caused a continuous stagger, of which the enemy team could not recover from. And there you have it, a first-hand look into how the Gunbreaker plays within Crystalline Conflict. I hope some of this information could be of use to you. If you would like to see more Gunbreaker within PvP, be sure to check out my channel, there you will find my original advanced guide to the Gunbreaker in PvP. Thanks for clicking on today's video, and I shall see you all in the next one.